The presence of the Lord is in the room. As you stand, could you just lift your hands? Man. falls because of his grace come on worship him because of something that's everlasting his mercy endure it's from generation to generation it will never stop it's never ending come on let's worship him for that thank you for your mercy 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 Woo. you don't give what we deserve thank you for your mercy you don't give what we deserve thank you for your mercy you give what we can earn thank you for your mercy thank you for your mercy thank you for your mercy yeah. Yeah. thank you for your mercy oh, le, 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 la, soda. Oh, le, le, la, soda, le, la, na. thank you for your mercy it's because of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. It's because of the Lord's mercy that we're not in the grave. It's because of the Lord's mercy that we're not locked up in a jail. It's because of your mercy. We should be in a hospital laying on our deathbed. But your mercy we should be bound by shame we should be bound by guilt we should be bound by loss but thank you for your mercy you held back the hand of sickness thank you for your mercy you held back the hand of sin Thank you for your mercy. Only the prideful can't be thankful for his mercy. Because what pride would tell you is that you got here on your own. That it was your righteousness that earned his goodness. But the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. Meaning on your best day, you're still not good enough your best day you're still in need of him no matter how long you think you're going without that thing that you think you can't get over that addiction or that cussing or even on, on your longest streak you're still in need of him because your goodness still means nothing because of how holy he is and until you realize how dirty you are you'll be never able to worship full heartedly because you're standing in your own goodness out of his mercy but we thank you for your mercy thank you for your mercy
We're about to go deep in worship. I want to read the scripture real quick. It's going to help some of y'all. I'm kind of hitting that wall in worship. There's something very unique I believe God wants to do tonight. I believe he wants to stretch you in your area of longevity in his presence. As the truth was up here ministering, I just helped the Lord and just kept hearing the Lord say capacity increase, capacity increase. What he's going to do tonight is that as you submit to the flow of the Spirit, you're going to realize that you'll be able to pray a little longer. You're going to be able to worship a little longer. You're going to be able to stay in his presence, energized a little longer. I want to read the scripture. Woo. I believe it's a, a familiar passage. I'm going to start at verse 7. It's John 4. It says, verse 7 says, Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, He keeps there with their curse. Please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, You're a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? So if you never heard the scripture before, what's happening is. Jesus has gone out of his way to go through a town called Samaria. And in Samaria, he meets a woman at the well. This woman is going to the well to get her drink, like she does a typical routine. So when the woman sees Jesus, she stops and says, we're not, and Jesus starts talking to her. She said, we're not even really supposed to be talking because you're this, you're a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan. We're, we're not supposed to be mixing. We're not even supposed to be talking because our different beliefs and Y'all don't believe we're good enough. Jews just think they're higher than everyone. And John 4 is a model of worship. So what this woman was saying when she was like, you're a Jew, I'm Samaritan, we're not even supposed to be talking. What it was, it was a spirit of condemnation that was coming up out of her saying, I know who you are and I'm not good enough to even be talking to you. So in order to go into this next place and this deeper depth of worship, I want you to lay and get rid of your condemnation. And what I mean, I want you to get rid of that thing that tells you uh, you shouldn't be lifting their hands because you just did this today or you just did this last night. Uh, you shouldn't be singing that song because you don't mean it. That, that lie of the enemy that causes you to feel like you are what you did. And that's a lie of hell. You're not what you did. You're a child of God. Verse 10 goes on and says, if you only knew the gift God has for you, Jesus said this, and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I will give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said. And this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoy? What this woman is telling the master, the miracle worker, is that you cannot get water from this well because you don't have a bucket. <laughs> I mean, this is the man who has open blinded eyes, who has uh, walked on water, is the man who has turned water into wine <laughs> and you're telling him that he can't get water because he doesn't have a rope or a bucket this is what I want you to lay down in order for us to go deeper your logic let me deliver some of you real quick what stops you from going so hard in worship and tapping into your next realm of what God has for you is because your logic, you're, you're trying to figure out how it's going to make sense. You're trying to figure out how people are going to understand it. And the Bible is, and what God is in Jesus instructing her to lay it down right here is your logic. He says, you don't even understand. I don't need a bucket to get water because I am the living water. <laughs> so chill out on overthinking. Be delivered from overthinking how you worship and overthinking, feeling like you're doing too much. Be free from your logic. And the other thing, because usually, real quick, usually what happens in worship surpasses your mind. If you've ever been in a deep atmosphere, you don't understand what's happening all the time. And God doesn't require your understanding. 
His ways are higher. His thoughts are deeper. He's not requiring your understanding. So if you're in a worship moment and a flow moment, even now, some of y'all trying to process too hard. What I'm, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to your spirit. And you're trying to process too much what I'm saying. But the Bible is saying, yo, get rid of your logic. Let your soul, let your spirit come alive in the presence of Jesus. So just don't try to understand everything that's about to happen in the next 20 minutes. Just lay at the altar and do what God says. All right, last thing. Please, sir, the woman said. So now that she understands who she's talking to, who we're dealing with, who we're in the presence of, she says, give me this water, then I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here to get water. And he said, go and get your husband. The woman said, I don't have a husband. Jesus said, you're right, you don't have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the one you're living with now. You certainly spoke truth. And this is where a lot of us get tense in worship. When the Spirit of God comes into a room to reveal truth in our hearts. And the reason we get tense is because, see, you think it's the enemy flashing things before your eyes and flashing uh, the ugliness of your heart and the bitterness that you have with your mother and the fact that you're still have unforgiveness in your heart towards your father you think that's the enemy that's trying to distract you in worship no it's the father revealing to you in worship in his presence what he wants to extract so there's about to be a realm that we're about to hit and the father is going to start to show you the ugliness in your own heart Isaiah chapter 6 Isaiah was before a king he says in the year King Isaiah died I saw the Lord I saw the Lord he was high and lifted up and his train his glory filled the temple and he said I saw the cherubims and the seraphims back and forth crying holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come and then he said listen to what Isaiah said and he said then I saw me and he said I said woe is me for I'm a man of unclean lips what it goes to show you is that when you see the Lord accurately you will see yourself accurately You have been not telling the truth if you say you've been in the presence of the Lord and you've just been left judging everyone else. If you've been in the presence of the Lord and you walked out not seeing the ugliness of your heart and he's not showing it for you to be condemned. He's showing it for because he wants to change it. Whatever he reveals, he wants to heal. Whatever he reveals, he wants to change. So as we go deeper, as we go deeper open your hearts to another level of the spirit father I pray now as we worship you even more passionately as we sing songs to you even more in a glorious way that your spirit your wind just come in the room refresh us heal us revive us And the altar is open too. If you feel the Lord pulling you, I just encourage you to come. Church, raise it loud. See, to us. 
worship you to worship you my That's our only desire tonight. We want to see you high and lifted. We want to see you high and lifted. To worship you. To worship you. I worship you. I live to worship you. Nothing else matters. Everything else can fade away. To worship you. I worship you. I live, I live, I live to worship you. To worship the King of Kings. To worship the Lord of Lords. To worship you. To worship you. I live, I live to worship If you're not pleased, nothing else matters. If you're not pleased, nothing else matters to worship. Let your presence fill the room. Let your glory fill the room. Let your power fill the room. Let your healing fill the room. Let your spirit fill the room. Come in, Jesus. Come in, Jesus, to worship. Worship is beckoning him. Your worship is bringing him in. 
your worship is welcome to him. Well, I don't know. Say it. Healing come in the room. Glory come in the room. Power come in the room. We want you here. We want you here. We want you here. We won't disrespect your presence. We won't disrespect your presence. We need you here. Like the woman at the well. We need you here. Like the woman with the issue of blood. We need you here. Like the blind Bartimaeus. We need you. We need you. We need you here.
decision without you or your presence. And I, 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 oh, I, oh, I, I'm lost without In you I live moving on my being. If you were to leave, what would I do? Where would I go? And I Give it all. 
like some of you the Lord is coming as a refreshing spirit because you felt like you've just been serving and you've just been living but you haven't been living a purpose filled life because you're just weary and you're tired if that's you I want you to come to the altar the Lord is about to break that thing it's like a uh, it's like a heaviness that you just live with and you just think it's regular but it's a demonic spirit come on the Lord and demonic doesn't mean devil's about to come out it just means it's of the devil it's not of God See, some, it's, and, and some of it has even trans bring it down a little bit some of it has even translated into depression see usually what depression starts off is is because you feel like you're not fulfilling what the Lord has called you to do or you're not living a well-lived life and a lot of that is out of the tiredness and the weariness of your soul a lot of you go to church and you serve at churches and you've been in church your whole life but you like as of like a couple years ago and even a couple months you've been serving uh, tiredly and like weary wearily and the Lord wants to confront that because he's your your lack your lack of strength is directly correlated to your lack of joy that's what the Bible means when it says the joy of the Lord is my strength so when you don't have strength you don't have joy that's why depression and weariness is kind of correlated. If you feel yourself just lethargic, it's not you just doing too much. That's the spirit of depression trying to creep up on you. So if you're at the altar, if this is you, I want you to lift your hands. The truth, truth, can you, can you come help pray with me? We have some ministers. It's nothing intense. So I just, I just want to, I just feel the Lord. I want to agree with you. Truth. I just want to agree with you in this thing, man. I feel the Lord intensively breaking this thing. Ariel, come on. I feel him breaking this. You are not called to live in slothfulness. That's the plan of the enemy. That's the plan. Hey, that's the plan of the enemy. Even some of you older people, you think it's just because you're old. No, that's a spirit of depression. The Lord, as long as you're living, you're supposed to be fulfilling the work of the Lord. He's not calling you to live a slow life. Yeah, y'all go ahead and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Come on, if you have this altar, just lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray against every spirit of depression. I pray I pray against every spirit of weariness, every spirit of tiredness that has tried to attach itself to the children of God that you have called. Father, I break its hold on their lives. Even the weariness that comes for church hurt, even the weariness that comes from bitterness, yeah, 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 yeah. Even the weariness that comes from bitterness, we just break every hold of bitterness, every hold of bitterness with parents, every hold, hey, every hold of bitterness with family. Man, I sense that this bitterness has caused you to be tired. We break every hold, every hold. You've worn yourself out because you're bitter, but the Lord wants to free your heart tonight. The Lord wants to free your heart tonight. We break your hold. We break. church like this in a long time I'm not a churchy person I don't just do church for fun I have two kids I can be at home spending time with this is the work of the Lord this is this is not gimmicks or games the Lord is healing I sense just enormous amounts of healing enormous amount of healing 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 healing
church. So break off this spirit of purposeless living those who live without a purpose so therefore the spirit of suicide is easy to slip through the hay I break that spirit of suicide I break every spirit that will cause to lie to these people that their lives are not worth living that their lives are not worth living so you think the spirit of suicide is just you trying to kill yourself no it's you trying to kill your purpose it's you trying to kill your assignment it's you trying to assassinate your assignment because you don't want to fully surrender to god i break every spirit of suicide you are called you are chosen you have something to live for you have something to live for you I saw the woman on the, at the well but with the spirit of condemnation and I hope he doesn't mind Michelle a little bit his testimony I asked him was he serving in church he said no nah, because he just felt like he wasn't basically he wasn't worthy because of things he has gone on and that's a lot of you all in this, in, in this room but what I saw on your life I saw you in front of arenas and stadiums but not just for church I see a, a, um, a marketplace anointing on you like the spirit of creativity just rest on you and I don't know if you deal with apparel or like 
arts or something but I, I see the, the grace for the arts and the creatives upon you. And what the Lord is about to do, he's going to call you out of this low place of condemnation. It's because you're in a process of the Lord pruning out of you. And you're perceiving it as you putting yourself in bad situations. But the Lord wants to call you out. And I even see almost like a Jezebelic spirit of like a, a come in the form of, of a female. I don't know if it's a, a relationship or a boss or uh, any, I don't know what it is. But the Lord is calling someone's hands who's upon you. And even tonight, when I saw him just break it off, because you're called to uh, just not nations, but you're called to like the, the culture, to the culture, to the culture. And, and, and what the Lord wants to do inside of you, he's going to have to break that fear off of you. It's the fear of not being good enough. I see you in your childhood, and you seem having to prove yourself in certain spaces, even in fitting into certain crowds when you were in high school or middle school, and you're having to force yourself into certain spaces because God intentionally had them reject you. But you, 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 uh, you cause yourself to fit in a box that you were never created. But the Father's delivering you from feeling like you're not good enough. So would you just stretch your hands? We're going to pray for this. Father, in the name of Jesus. What's, what's your name? Mylon. Father, in the name of Jesus, would you break this insecurity, this fear off of Mylon? Uh, Mylon, the Lord is about to give you a series of dreams. He's going to open up your spirit. Your spirit has been closed off, not because of him, but because of your guilt and the shame. Father, I break off every shame, every spirit of shame, every spirit of condemnation. I thank you that I thank you that you're proving and you're making him aware of the truth that he is not what he he has done that he is not what he has lived that he is not anything that he has been in but you have redeemed him you have sanctified him you have justified him father I even thank you for this process that he's in and I even thank you that you're giving him language for it that you're you're changing his environment because of what he's called to I, I see an apparel name that the Lord is going to bring out of you and the, the, the reason fear wants to hold because he, he wants you to uh, dim down and dummy down on this idea the Lord has given you but the Lord says not so you're going to be called to the marketplace and the church and what you're going to do you're going to bring such an amount of wealth not just money but a wealth of knowledge and wisdom the Lord has placed an anointing on the side of you since the age about 14 15 of, of wisdom and uh, people will come to you for advice just out of nowhere even your friends because the Lord placed the spirit of and the gift of wisdom inside of you so father manifest that thing now manifest hey, and let this 29th year let the 29th how old are you 26. I see something special in the 29th year. I, I think the Lord is going to manifest this by the 29th year. If you yield to him and you submit to him and there's going to be even a new surrounding of people around you, the Lord is going to give you by the 29th year, before he's 30, make him a millionaire. <laughs> before he's 30, make him a millionaire in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Lift your hands, man. It's not something we plan to do. I'm sorry. The Spirit of the Lord is in here. If you need healing for anything, I just like praying for healing. If you need healing for anything, would you just lift your hand? You don't have to come to the altar. If you need healing from anything, if someone's hand is lifted around you, I just want you to find them, lay your hands on them. Come on, we're going to do this together. Yeah, we can pray for it, of course. Come on, if you see somebody's hand around you, just lay your hands on them. We're going to agree for healing. Father, I thank you for healing for every area, every sickness, every disease. You said you are Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee, the God that healeth thee. I thank you if you reveal a sickness, you're not just revealing it to make it known, but you're revealing it to heal it. Father, I thank you by, hey, for those who, are, uh, who have been struck with uncurable diseases. Father, I thank you by the next doctor appointment that you will be Jehovah Rapha, that you will give them the faith enough to believe, that you will give them the faith enough to encourage. Is, is there someone who deals with like stomach, something with your stomach, like stomach ulcers or something? You, keep, it's you. You deal with stomach, you. You deal with something with your stomach ulcer or something? Yeah, come on, come on. If you deal with, I feel something and it's, they're saying it's uncurable. 
do something in your stomach. I just sense the Lord healing stomachs. Like, he's about to do something supernatural with the stomach. Come on, yeah, if that's you, just come close. Church, a lot of you may have not been in an atmosphere like this. But if, if you're not at the altar, we just ask that you pray. Um, because your faith, if you remember in the Bible, around, I think in John, uh, or Mark, it was in Mark, that the man who couldn't get to Jesus had friends and they were in the house and the house was crowded and he couldn't get to Jesus so his friends had enough faith to lift him up to the roof and Jesus healed him y'all remember that lift him up through the roof and put him in the house so that you're the friends right now you're the friends and I want you to pray as if this is your family member I want you to pray as if this is someone you know because you never know what your prayers can do for a person so as, as we're about to pray for this thing and ministers and anybody y'all can start laying hands if we're about to pray for these people we're going to pray that the sickness that the doctors say are incurable uncurable that the man who can cure all <laughs> that the god who can cure yep that the god who can cure all gives them enough faith to believe that he can do it for them all right come on let's pray church father in the name of jesus you said you are jehovah rapha father you said you are the god that healeth all sickness and disease you said that you took stripes huh? you said that you hey, that you bore our iniquity and by your stripes we are healed so father you said that in romans 8 that we are your children and because of the spirit of adoption we have the right to call out to our father so tonight father as your children as your sons and daughters we pull on that right with you we call on the father of our healing hallelujah we pray that now by the supernatural power of jesus that you heal every sickness of the stomach that you heal every sickness of the stomach every stomach ulcer every tumor every issue in the stomach heal it heal it heal it now heal it now heal it now even the issues of the stomach that affect fertility heal it heal it yep heal it heal it heal it heal it heal it if hey hey sutata heal it heal it heal it heal it heal it all fear be removed all fear be removed yep all fear be removed it's about two of you that got fear that this thing will turn cancerous all fear be removed all fear be removed healing in the name of jesus you shall live and not die to declare the works of the lord to declare to declare the works of the lord to declare the works of the lord to declare the works of the lord this generational sickness stops with you this generational sickness stops with you this generational sickness stops with you heal it heal it for good heal it for good heal it for good heal it for good I pray against the lie of the enemy that causes you to believe that this sickness is God's judgment. I pray against every lie of shame and condemnation that causes you to believe that the Lord has forgot about you. The Lord is with you. Do not fear, for the Lord is with you.
everything I desire Only this I see Just to dwell, dwell, dwell Here forever This will be my posture Laying at your feet Oh, just to dwell, dwell, dwell
just be in this sanctuary. Let it be in this sanctuary. We will present our bodies as living sacrifices. Holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable. It's the least we can do because of your goodness. Because of your loving kindness, because of your faithfulness, the least we can do is say thank you. The least we can do is give our lives to you. The least we can do is say yes to you. The least we can do is say yes to you. The least we can do is say yes to you. Come on, before we leave this place, can you offer God another yes? An uncomfortable yes. A hard yes, a yes in spite of how it feels, 
a yes in spite of what it looks like a yes in spite of how hard it gets we say yes lord we say yes lord you have submitted vessels you have submitted people we say yes we say yes we say yes to the assignment we say yes to the calling we say yes we repent for neglecting what you've assigned us to. We repent for neglecting what you've called us to. We repent for not living the lives that you've called us to live. We say yes tonight. One day you're in the presence of your Lord, in the presence of your glory, in the presence of a king. We bow and say yes. We bow and say yes to the Lord. We bow and say yes to the master. Not just our savior, but our Lord. Not just our redeemer, but our master. We say yes. We say yes. Whatever you want to do, yes. However you want to move, yes. Whatever you want to take, yes. Whatever you want to move, yes. Whoever you want to remove, yes. Whatever desire you want to take, yes. Whatever relationship you need to dismantle, yes. Whatever job you need to kill, yes. Whatever church you need to remove me from, yes. Whatever thing I need to leave, yes. Whatever assignment I need to pick up, yes. We say yes to the hard thing to the times of prayer we say yes to the times of fasting we say yes to the times of turning over our plate we say yes to the times of retreating and consecration we say yes we say yes there's nothing like your presence thank you for visiting us tonight thank you for dwelling with us tonight You're omnipresent, but you don't go everywhere. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for allowing us to enter your presence. Not you coming into ours, but thank you for allowing us to enter your presence. You're so holy. My hallelujah belongs to Yeah. 
yes, we say hallelujah, hallelujah. to the King of Kings, hallelujah. to the Lord of Lords, hallelujah. to the great I am. Hallelujah. We say hallelujah, because you're worthy of the glory, because you're worthy of the honor. We say hallelujah. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We get all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. All of the praise. and give you glory. Hey, hey, we say hallelujah. We lift up our hands. We open our mouths and we give you glory. We give you all the glory. Say all the glory. Say all the glory. Say all the glory. Tell it. Say you get the glory. You get the glory. Get the glory out of my life. Get the glory out of my life. You get the glory. You get the glory. You get the glory. You get the glory. See, we bow before you. Lord, we adore you. We bow before you. Lord, we adore you. We bow before you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we adore you. Say, come by here. Come by here. Come by here. Hear who you want to hear. Say who you want to say. Come by here. Come by here. Come by here. Say, come by here. Hear who you want to hear. And come by here. Set free and deliver. Set free and deliver. Set free and deliver. Somebody lift up your voice in the room. One more time, church. We say. Come by him, come by him, come by him, come by him, Savior, come by him, hear my humble cry, come by him, all that I'm calling, come by him, please don't pass me by, come by him, come by him, come by him, shoot his head, the voices. You deserve, you deserve it. Oh, yes, you do. Yeah. You deserve it. Oh, yes, you do. Get the 
just a holiday, but it's every day, and all things give thanks. Into my courts with thanksgiving. 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 Be thankful and bless my name. Be thankful and bless his name. Into his courts with thanksgiving. Into his courts with thanksgiving. Into his courts with thanks. We're grateful. We're grateful. We're great. We're grateful.
back home of my life, I say, Whoa, I'm great. And you saved me from danger, seen and unseen. Whoa, I'm great. You covered me in my mess, I say, Whoa. And I say, oh, 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 I'm grateful. Get my family together. You mended my heart when it was broken. You rescued me. what I thought was for me. You know better than I, you knew better than I did. You rescued me from what I thought was for me. finite thinking you'll realize and it's cliche but you'll realize that what you thought was man's rejection the reward is God's protection and it's a different level of gratitude when you have enough strength and you have enough heart to say that yeah I wanted I wanted that yeah, like, I thought that was for me. But now, in my lack of understanding, I can still rely on your understanding and say, Oh, oh I'm great. have enough strength to thank him in the middle of the hard thing. I'm great. The thing that you don't understand. In Thessalonians it says, in all things give thanks. The quickest way to access the heart of God is by thankfulness. 
but gratitude that's why it says enter his courts with things the first thing you should do is start thanking him because what it does it beckons God to come because it shows that no matter how hard it looks Job come here and no matter so no matter how hard it gets though you slay me I will trust him and I will say thank you in all things oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good when it says he is good that means your plans may seem good but ultimately the Lord is good the Lord is good the Lord is good I'm grateful. Oh, I'm grateful. Oh, 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 oh. I'm grateful. Oh. say thank you now Father I thank you now you can find enough strength to thank him in a storm be surprised how much of your perspective changes so much depth to this. I wish you would just tap in and say one time, say, oh, I'm grateful. Say it again. Oh, I'm grateful. We sing, oh, really protection you rescued me from what I thought was for me what was man's rejection it was your protection you rescued me from what I thought was for me that relationship I thought was for me that marriage I thought was for me that job I thought was for me those people I thought were for me you rescued me from what I thought was for me and whoa I'm grateful oh so grateful it's a song of the mature a melody of the mature when you can thank him in a hard place when you can thank him with no understanding you can thank him when you're walking by faith and not by sight 
It's a song of the mature. It's a song of the spirit, a melody of the mature. When we say, Whoa, I'm what I thought was for me what was man's rejection is your protection it's our song of our spirits a melody of the mature you rescued me from what I thought was for me so with my soul I sing, oh, I'm grateful, oh, I'm grateful. That man screaming out in the back, I just heard the spirit of the Lord say, that is the prayers of women in your life, specifically like a grandmother figure that has sustained your life. I see three instances where you should have killed. Is, who was that screaming in the back? Who's, who's? Somebody just go touch him, please. Whoever is that crying out, yeah, him, that's saying hallelujah. Somebody just go put your hands on him. Man, I, I hear your desperation just reminding me of the Bible story of the man who cried out to Jesus despite what other people were thinking. And the Lord said there was three times where you should have been killed, but the prayers of a, a woman like a grandmother figure preserved your life. And the Lord says for these next three years, I'm calling you into intense evangelism. You're going to be called to the streets. You're going to hey, You're going to be called to the prisons. You're going to be called to the even to the trap houses. I see you have an experience and knowledge of those trap houses and the Lord is going to call you to those places because he sees your purity the Lord says fret not even your financial state that you worry about even your financial state that you worry about the Lord hey I see a court case and I see the Lord giving you what's due yours in the name of Jesus that before 2020 is out you're going to see your whole financial situation shift because the Lord heard your desperation somebody shout in the room Whoa, I'm grateful. Whoa, I'm grateful. I sing, oh, I'm so great. I'm great. I'm grateful. For that we give you glory. Father, thank you. We can sing it a million more times and it still not express our gratitude. But with what we do have, 